Well, welcome to the Total Awesome some fishing show. We're actually going across the sea, the Irish Sea, two of all places. It's the Irish Sea, Graham. <laughs> Ireland. Yeah, we're here on the, the Stenner Ferry. Uh, it's about a three and a half hour ferry. We've got a nice restaurant on board. Probably going to grab myself a Guinness while Dad's asleep. <gasps> <laughs> and then uh, we're going to go from, we're here at Fishguard at the moment in Wales and we're heading to Ross Lair and then it's what, a three and a half hour drive to Cork? Uh, Cork McSherry yeah. we're going to, which is uh, to the west side of Cork, across. We don't know how bumpy it's going to be guys, it's a bit breezy here at the moment. But listen, you can also fly over if you wanted, but you can't take the tackle, you can't yeah, take the gear. Your own fishing gear. And believe gear. me, it's an epic adventure, we've got plenty in the car haven't we? We've got, the car is absolutely rammed yeah. full of tackle. But I've got my bushcraft gear with me as well because we're going to do a TA Outdoors film. Hopefully, yeah. The weather's looking a bit overcast, but hopefully, guys, we will catch some fish for you. Ah. Pardon? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Or must be the beans. <laughs> and of course, the benefit of using the ferry is there's several ferry sailings right through the night. Now, sometimes we've left, gone, driven through the night and got a morning ferry, and you can get in Ireland and be fishing by sort of well, late afternoon, yeah. something like that, can't yeah. you? Uh, the other benefit is coming back. We're hoping to stay for six days, come back Friday night, race through the night, get a and b yeah. and catch the ferry early in the morning to get back from Ireland to back to the UK. So it's very, you know, well, it's very it's a different times, sailings and everything like that. If you want to come on it, to me, it's a no-brainer because the ferry I could bring my car, I could put all the tackle on. And don't forget, guys, even if it's a bit rough, you can, I think, book, book cabins down there as well. Yeah, we, we've had a cabin before, a, cabin before, a nice really little good. kip in a cabin, yeah. So if it is rough, you might want to pay a little bit extra and have a cabin. Meantime, we're not thinking rough because we're going to be going across this sea first, then we're going to get on Mark's boats. We don't know if it's a big boat or a small boat, do we? We're not sure yet, no. But we shall get over there, and as soon as we get a fish, you... <laughs> Was that my finger? <laughs> it's a gun! <laughs> <laughs> the timing of that! When we get there, <laughs> you guys will be the first to... <laughs> no. Uh. See you over there. Can't you think of what you told me? Don't know what of it was true. Now the smoke is cleared and I see. But all I see is you. Sitting there with empty paper. And I pretty fake smile You see my lot more safer Once I came around Now I've seen enough to understand that you are not who you claim to be And to all the love Come your way You have nothing to say Really, really big one. Have they gone that? Yeah. Well done, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> biggest one, biggest one uh, this week was. Uh, 
24 and a half. Uh, what's the biggest you've had reckon over here in Ireland? Oh, the biggest one here is 48 and a half pounds. 48, 48 and a half. Yeah. yeah, that was it. That was, we broke the Irish record. It was there for since 1966. Really? Yeah. And your tip, your tip for fishing for link guys coming out the boat? Perks, Lee. Oh, yeah, you know, mostly. Rich. Oh, yeah, per perks and uh, nice chunk of mackerel, yep. fl flowing trays, and the uh, Muppet, nice luminous Muppet. How long the trace walk? Uh, about a metre, metre and a half. Yeah, that's enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get him for the back one. Bring him in, here he comes. Are you ready for it? The beauty. Hey, oh, fishing can change in half an hour. Eh? Down. No, that is a big leg. Oh, whoa! That is a monster, Dad. Oh, Graham, that's a monster, boy. That's some ling, boy. Dad is some ling. And I got my bait back. Absolutely, yeah. Is that the biggest one you've ever caught? I'd say that would be, Mark. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all a 30 pound nearly, I'd say. Yeah. No, I've never oh, had a 30. He's 30 anyway. I've never Please. had a 30 oh. pounder. 30, 35, I'd say. <laughs> I'd say he's over 30, isn't he? That's a huge lean. It's just lux, all it is. That's not. <laughs> what he was, he was trying to break the line out to get me, get me rig back. That's an absolute monster. Look at that. Nice one, Dad. Fathers, one, one way to celebrate Fathers Day. What size is he? He's 20. Is he? 20 yards. That's a specimen link? That's right. I find they're better for the deeper water, lads. He'll come up. Yeah, I'll hold him there. You might ask yourself, what on earth is he doing? It's approaching pitch dark. I've got an old nut on there. I've got a piece of pollock fillet left over that's going to sink to the bottom and hopefully a conger eel off this pier is going to eat the fish bait, the hook and the nut and disappear with it. That's the theory. Oh, let's get it skewered on there. I'll drop some rods down here. It's just we're going to give it a try because the, the, each hour uh, at night, which is when the conger is going to feed, is an hour later with the tide. Tonight is high water at midnight, so it's the closest I can get without staying up all night. We're out on the big boat tomorrow, going to give it a go. We've had a half a pint of beer, we could have stayed, but no, we've got to put a bait in the water and at least give it a shot. There are some very, very big conger off of this pier. I've lost them, I've had them up on top. Fingers crossed, he might even show you one. I'm dropping it just down to the bottom and the weight of the nut is just going to take it. And it's a little bit too much tide at the moment, but it's going to get slacker as it gets near high water. Depends how long we stay out tonight, to be honest, we're really tired. Done a lot of filming. I checked with these multipliers that the drag is really tight for when you set the hook on these fish. There's bits of old hawser, bits of old nets and junk on the bottom here. You will lose fish. And the last time I lost three out of three here. However, put it out of gear, put the clicker on, and just lay it well back. Going next to it, I've got a spinning rod here. It's really a sort of lure rod. And this one's got a fixed ball on it, but it's got 40 uh, pound braid on it. So I've got a chance with that. I've got that one down with a piece of meat and I've got one the other side, a spinning rod. That's got a piece of meat on it as well. If any of these rods go off, Mike's gonna take the first one. Should we get one? Look, if we don't, I've got a feeling we might be back during the daytime, have another shot at it.
Now you get a big fish like a congre or anything over about 15 pounds, even anything over 10 pounds in double figures, you're not going to haul it up on the rod. You'll break the rod or the line or the leader will break. So we use just, you can use a long handle gaff. I use a short one. So I used to use this for sharks and stingrays and stuff like that abroad. And what it is, is a piece of pole there onto which I have lashed and screwed to the eye a giant shark hook. It's a marlin hook actually. It is a mustad, um, sea demon this one, 7731, but you'll notice I ground the barb off it because this is what, now what we call a release gaff. So you can get it in the jaw of a big conger, lift it out safely, unhook it, and then you can release it with a release gaff. So that's what that's for. So we've got a chance, if we do get a hook up, we've got to get that eel up on the surface first. If we get it on the surface and it doesn't start spinning, which is a habit, and it lays still, we've got a chance we might get it out. First, hook the fish. Now, my theory is what happens around these piers, these commercial boats, on most piers, this is an island where I do my, a lot of my shore conga fishing, around these piers, they wash off their boats, they wash the boats down, a lot of rubbish goes in there, crushed up bits of crab shell, all the rubbish bits of fish goes in there, and it just stays down here. The congas live in holes in the wall. This is my, it's not theory, it's fact, we've actually filmed them. Um, one of the best places you can conga fish is either side of the steps especially on very, very old piers, stone piers, because what happens is these boats, they moor up here to let passengers off or to unload. The constant in and out of gear with the propellers churns up all the time and it, and it basically it stirs up and removes some of the concrete that's holding the stones together. Once there's a gap under there, the congas live under there with just their head sticking out the wall, the side of the wall. Now at night they will come out further and start hunting further afield for small fish. But when it's just dust like this, they just stick their heads out. Now what happens at the moment, the crabs absolutely swarm over, the, over your bait, so you can have nice fresh mackerel, it doesn't matter what it is, that's why I'm using Pollock. It gets swarmed by clusters of crabs, it must be a nightmare down there. And you can see them sometimes tapping away on your rod top. But what happens is, if that gets chewed off, say in 20 minutes I bring a bait up, I'll put a fresh bait on, put it down, I keep doing that, and what happens is eventually the smell will percolate down in the current, draw out one of these congas, and he comes up, and he will crunch all the crabs as well that's in over that bait. He's, he's coming for the crabs, he eats the crabs anyway. So I have no problem in this situation with crabs smothering the baits. In fact, I think it helps attract the conga. Well guys, that's what I'm talking about, crabs jumping all over your baits. You can see that there. It doesn't bother me because they're still on the bait and that tells the congas, as you can see here, big crabs, they're going to be swarming over those baits, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the congas going to eat them as well. He's going to, he's going to have a go at that bat. <laughs> Aggressive or what? Well guys, we're going to call it quick, so we a good hour and a half into the dark, no takes, but we helped a guy move a boat around here, one of the trawlers, one of the commercial, and he said there's been a lot of fresh water come down, and he reckons the congas might just have moved out while that fresh water flush is going through. We'd actually notice this today when we're out bassing, so we're going to call it quits, get a night's sleep, and see if we can't get out on the boat tomorrow, get away from the fresh water and go right out deep. Mark and Patricia Gallen have a fabulous guest house. It's an old country style courtyard and the walls, believe it or not, in the outside of the building are something like two feet thick. So it's a constant temperature all the time. Once it warms up, it stays warm. They've got a variety of different rooms there. And you can see the stone wall there, beautiful setting, very, very traditional. It's got really, let's face it, everything you want, including 
including folks. Yes, a beautiful lounge where you can have a TV and watch. No, don't watch TV. Watch the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now that's a quick shot of the Lusitania, which is a wreck we often fish about, I think it's about 15 miles out, and we go shark fishing. But before we go shark fishing, we need refueling with breakfast. Now we're not talking your standard breakfast here. Trish offers a continental breakfast or a full Irish fry up. And to be honest, you can tailor it to your needs. There's dad pouring a morning glass of uh, orange juice there. Plenty on offer, fresh fruit, everything's fresh. It's all healthy food, except when we come along and we start chucking sugar all over everything. And let me tell you something, guys, this is a fry up you will not forget. Wait a minute, my wife doesn't serve us breakfast. I don't get this sort of service at home. But you go to Woodpoint, and one thing you do get is a full service. And you can have whatever you want. And in our case, being British, we have sausages, we can have bacon, we can have eggs, we can have virtually anything you want there. But what I will say, Mike, is once you have a big breakfast like that, you really eat much during the day, do you? It certainly sets you up for the day. And if you're going out wreck fishing, or even in the small boats for a full day, guys, you need a full belly for it. And of course, Patricia will also do your packed lunch. She does our flask for us, so just get it set up. Look, you don't need to ask, you just need to basically turn up at Mark's everything, but everything is taken care of. Well, there's some familiar looking people. Yeah, but I really like the look of that old guy. He is so good looking, and he's in a few pictures as well. We've been coming here, well, I've been coming here most of my uh, my teenage years I was here, and obviously up throughout my 20s as well, but how long have you been coming here, Dad? Over 40 years I was fishing with Mark, um, coming to Ireland, great place to go, great fishing over there, absolutely no question of that. Look, you're going to take a gamble with the weather, but you take a gamble with the weather anywhere. When you get it right, there are definitely more fish in Ireland than anywhere else I've known. And of course, there's plenty of places to take Mark's self-drive boats to and you can even take them right out into Court McSherry Bay. Well, last night wasn't great for the Congrils, and as fishermen all know, we have to blame something. But today's a different day. We're going out again, beautiful blue sky, a howling wind. But we're gonna give it a shot on Mark's big boat. Yeah, what, you, what we're gonna do is um, mix. It's gonna be mixed fishing because we're out on the wrecks. Uh, so we could be drifting, we could be anchored, we're not sure. So we've got two different, completely different setups. I've got the spinning gear here uh, with just the, the uh, strong popping rods really, cast weight. This one's got a casting weight of 100 grams. This one's a casting weight of 150 grams. We've got a four and a half thousand size reel there and a five and a half thousand size reel there, or 5,500. Uh, one's got 50 pound braid, is it? One's 50, one's, one's 40. 40 pound braid. That's my setup, or our setup. I'm going to be using, because I'm seeing this wind, and Mike says we're wrecking, but a feeling we might be inshore for reef, I don't know. I kind of hope we are. I don't want to go off the face of the planet and get really pounded. In which case, I've taken regulation boat gear. 20 pound class rods, you can see just standard short ones, about six feet long, I suppose. And just a TLD 25 size reel. I think we're actually thinking one's a 20. 50 pound line, seek and destroy for me. I'm gonna catch whatever's down there, it's coming up. Let's, uh, let's hope this wind dies down and hopefully we catch some fish. Now, if you guys want some light tackle fishing, then Cork McSherry in Ireland is the place for you. Mark will always find you a place to fish, even on a windy day. He can get round bays, round headlands, and you can get amongst this, well, this huge, vast shoals of pollocks swimming around the reef there. This day in particular was rough, but look how close to shore we're fishing. And Mike's getting fish after fish here on lures. Now then, some of you guys out there are going to ask, oh, what lures should we take to Ireland? Well, we personally like Sidewinder lures, but what colour is what you use is important, Mike. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of pink, especially over in Ireland. 
Uh, it's been great for Pollock and it's actually been great for Cod for me. Now we didn't get too much, too many Cod this year. However, as you can see, the pink lure was absolutely slaying it that day. And I think, Dad, you then went on to a red lure and you ended up doing really well on red. So what is it with the pink and red colours that make these fish so active? Very, very similar they are. And this being shallow water means we can use light tackle. You can use light leads. Look, this is a nice size Pollock that Mark's getting. Uh, in the net there and we put a lot of fish back if they're undersized they don't slaughter everything and hey here we go mr p jr with a <laughs> double hookup i don't know what they're going to turn out to be but two at once because dad was filming mike and dad left his rod down and there we go there's a fish hookup you don't know in all honesty what you're going to catch when you drop those lures down down to those reef you can come up with absolutely anything even two at a time and as you can see, it's another good pollock, double hookup, and notice something about the colour of those lures. It's a dead weight, guys. Is it yet more pollock or is it going to be a cod? Nice to see a cod. I think it's a little while we're going to go and anchor, see what else is on the bottom. But the pollock fishing for the boat is really pretty good. Blood, blood blind. It's matching the colour of the lure. I know what it is. It's designed a fish. <laughs> we go, there's still fish coming up on the other side of the boat as well. And piling them out today, we've got a fish box. I have to go for these bigger fish box to fill it up. And then, even then, we're going to go and anchor some of the And of course, once you get a little bit deeper offshore, you can get bigger fish. And we're on Mark's big boats here, so we can go well, anywhere you want. You can go up to 30 miles out. And that looks like to me. Coldfish, I think. Was it a coldfish that one, Mike? Yeah, this one was a coldfish. The only one I caught on the trip, actually. But they do grow to massive size over there, and they're very, very powerful fighting fish. Yeah, they don't blow up when they go down deep. Uh, they're totally different than the pollock. They've got a smaller eye, a smaller mouth, but they fight all the way to the surface, whereas the pollock tends to blow up a bit with sort of air pressure problems. But I can see pink lures coming over the side, one after the other, in those fish's mouth. That must be the colour for Island's Waters. And what's that one? This, I believe, was a cod. Again, my only cod of the trip. This one was on a red lure. Again, pink and red killing it. Now, these, this is a small cod, actually, for Oban Island. They do grow up to over 20 pounds out deep on the big wrecks. And here's Shawnee, who's now skipper of one of Mark's boats, showing you the stamp of pollock you can get inshore. Look how close we are to the reef and the rocks there. Literally in of yards. That fish has got to be... I guess in what, 10 pounds? I'd say about 10 pounds, yeah. And here you are hooked into another monster of the deep. Exactly, deep water offshore, probably gone to one of Mark's many wrecks or even one of his big reef marks. You don't have to go miles and miles offshore. You can go anywhere between the old head and the seven heads. There's reef everywhere. You get fish like conga, ling, and as you can see here, this is just an average size conga. Uh, but you can have really good sport fishing big baits on the seabed. I will say with conga, it's better fishing at anchor and lovely conga there, incredibly powerful jaws. Years ago they used to eat them, now I think most people tend to put them back. Now then if you do want to eat some fish, do not worry about it because Sean the Skipper or even Mark will gladly fillet your catch for you. Hopefully you'll take some fish home with you from this trip as a bit of a memory but justifying going out fishing because there's nothing better than fresh fish and just watch the way Sean waste absolutely no meat on it, no meat at all, taking that meat off the fillet and that's what it's all about. I'm not saying I can do it, I will get some meat off it, but I'll probably end up like a lot of guys, wasting a lot. If you don't want to do it yourself, ask them, they'll help you out. Here is a prime pollock and you can see, I guess two fillets it will feed, what might probably two people? Yeah, they, they, are, they do have big fillets on the pollock and don't waste the carcass, They keep you can keep the carcass because you, you've used them for conger eels and things like that off the pier. Haven't shark you? fishing as well, take them out for the blue sharks offshore. And you can see he just strokes the knife down there. You don't hack at it, don't do it in a rough sea. And do you know what the saying is folks? You're more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than a sharp knife. Well, we've had a good night's sleep. We're here at Wood Point, which is Mark and Patricia Gannon's super spot. You won't get a better spot to stay. If you're a fisherman, this is where they all great stay. Great b, b and a great breakfast. Just up the hill from Court Mac. It's called Wood Point for a reason. It's a big headland covered in a woodland. So the plan today, guys, is we're going to do some small boat fishing. Uh, it's all going to be light tackle stuff. The first things first, we're going to head across the bay 
and hopefully try for a bass. We're going to do slow trolling, uh, light lures. They're not going to be weighted. Usually we use like a red gill type lure. Yep. Slow trolling, keeping it relatively high in the water. If that doesn't work, we're going to head out into the middle of the bay where there's some rocks and reefs, and we're going to try vertical jigging for some pollock. Again, with small but small lures, but these ones will be weighted. Sidewinder ones, those ones that are really yeah. good for uh, bass, pollock, that sort of thing. Yeah, and I might try a few weedless ones as well because there's quite big kelp beds there. That's if they're feeding, and of course, we're nearly ready for feeding. We're going to yeah. go in and get one of Trish's power breakfasts. Fry up, yeah. Uh, and then it's down to the boat. Sorry for the wind guys, it's got up, it's absolutely howling. It doesn't look it here, but because if anybody's a cameraman out, cameraman out there knows you don't need much wind. But we just got set up, the first one wasn't great, the first drift. The second drift, we got the rods rigged up how we want it. Woo, this is a nice pollock guys, oh my god. Got the net. Oh, that's a lovely fish. I'm gonna have to hand this one out. Oh, oh dad, that's a stonker. That's a few. Oh, oh no. That one, guys, on what we call a fire tail. Look at that fish, man alive. <laughs> that, I can tell you now, last time Mike came was four years ago. It, we, we caught fish on this. Yeah. The hook is, it, hook's it, not been changed. It's, it's not rusty. Been, that's not been sharper for four years. And that's the sort of fish you can get out here. Call me Sherry. It's a place to come in a self drive boat. Let's get it back. I want to get out for another drift. That third fish was on all the time. The drag was too loose. I thought something hit it. Yeah, you did. You said it banged on. I don't know how to tell you guys this, but this is on an LRF rod. It shows you what you can do. Light tackle, not light line. Not light line. Oh, this one's a good fish too, man. So that's the first proper drift we've had. We've had a triple hookup, three on the one drift. And I can see the boy back there by those huge cliffs there. This fish is got, this is not a small fish. Could bend on the rod. I can use it, yeah. Oh, he's bigger than the last one. Oh, look at this. Oh, he's Dad, bigger that's than a big bollock. He's bigger than the last one. Oh my God. I blame that Mark Gannon, he always sends us out when there's too many fish. He said, not honest to God, this is a big boat pollock. Oh man, that's a, that is a chunk. Oh, what about that? Sidewinder lure, catch and cook. We're gonna, we're gonna catch more than we can cook. That's what, a, what a spanking fish. We've always done work well on bass. We had a little try for bass inshore, nothing. And we've put these sidewinders on. These are their weedless lures because it is snaggy here. You see a big, big predator mouth that opens up and they suck back sand eels, small bass, small mackerel, anything small, four or five inches long is going down the hatch. Yes, baby, fish on! On the light tackle. Come on, baby. Oh, <laughs> digging, digging. Apologies for the wind, guys. Oh, this is quite a nice fish, I think. Come on, come on, Pollock. It's a Pollock. Take your time. So what I'm doing here, guys, I'm just dropping my lure down. It's hit the seabed there. You must wind up fast a few, a few turns and then do a nice steady retrieve. And obviously being an LRF rod, this is sort of folding over anyway. And you just do a, li a little bit of a well, I suppose 15 to 20 feet off the bottom, no takes, drop it back down again. And then this rod here has got that plastic worm on, and that's just fished on a relatively light drag, and that's just bouncing up and down with the rock of the boat, the worm's moving up and down in the water. It's just a bonus. 
So if I get a tangle on this rod, or Mike gets a tangle on the other rod, or we've got to tackle up again, then this one's still fishing. That's our bonus rod. Fish on. <laughs> I don't think this is a small one either, Dad. Really? Well, it peeled some line off. Come on. Now, this has got some weight to it. Well, it has got weight when you this... see what comes up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll show you guys. There comes the weight, <laughs> though. There is the weight. <laughs> Look at it's it. It's got some weight to it, you said. That's a nice pollock. On the worm. On the bolt. On the, on the nut bolt. You go, look at that, the fire tail, people. Can you beat that lure? That is definitely one of the best lures out there. The, the... Lovely fish. Took the fire tail worm. That's why we dropped down that worm and we let it fish freely on its own, just with the boat, with the drift of the boat. And then we work the other lures, the shads. But awesome fish. Hopefully there's some bigger ones out there. We're probably, we're just trying to find the drift now, get the right drift, but that is a lovely fish. But we're gonna put this back. They are good eating fish, but we're gonna put this back. We will keep one, hopefully later on today if we catch. Right, I've got the, the Heracles Benjo. Buddy Mark Brown gave me this at Tobber Manor. Uh, don't know what color it is, purple and black. Already have one fish on it, but we will see. It's pretty windy, guys. Pretty windy. You in? It might be snagging. There's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, Jay, he's got it. Has he got it? Is he on? Yeah, small one. Let's put this one down. And that, guys, is... Oh, no, he's dropped it. On the free line plastic worm. Just bump in there. I don't think he's on. I'm going to drop that down again. Second highest cliffs in Ireland over there. Wonderful walks. And, you know, it's undiscovered virtually. Nobody... Really a lot of tourists know all about this Seven Heads Peninsula. And it has a unique weather system here, I was told. Over here, now where's Broad Strand? In there, over there in Broad Strand. I've laid there with you, haven't I, Mark? Yeah. We've been laying on the beach the cloud fishing. Formations and the, the, seven heads. the cloud formations. Yeah. They, you could see them building and they burned out. And I did ask Patricia why that was. And she said it's one of the driest places in Ireland. Well, that's got to be something anyway. So we're dry in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even watching, folks. I don't imagine it's coming out pretty dead, actually. I do like this rod. Look at the bend in that. I know it's a light rod. I realise that. But we're in no trouble at all fighting the fish with it. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, <laughs> oh right in the face. He's throated that one. Look at Now, there you can see, folks, how he's folded the eel down his throat and get it right down let me just get that hook out in fact I'll show you that now how far he's got that down his throat by that sucking motion popping open his his, uh, his jaws to get it down there if I can... there's the hooks come out beautiful looking fish there yeah? and zooming back boom gone come on Short pumps. God, I think this is a nice fish, you know. I got a strong drag on as well. Certainly felt a good fish when it first powered off, but then it is the new same bolt rig. That's a nice one. That's a nice pollock. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Do you know what? This is this is a lump, I reckon. I see, I've got polaroids, yeah, nice fish. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, it's good. Oh, he's hooked in the back of the head. That's <laughs> he's, he's hooked in the back of the head. I don't oh, care no, where he's good. hooked. I don't care where he's hooked. That is why he's scrapping well, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's why he thought. I thought it, I went quiet because I thought this could be about nine pounds. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Benjo Shad still catches fish. <laughs> Another totally awesome pollock. Let's get back on that mark. Here in Court Mike Sherry in Ireland. That's why we come here every year, guys, because it's really good fishing. Good fishing, isn't it? Yeah. Back he goes. Whoa. Guys, you've got to watch a crash dive like this of a pollock. They really do power down, as does Mike's rod in a minute. It's going to go. He's had a couple of bumps. It's not a bad fish, not a monster fish, but listen, on this type of rod, you can tell the bend in it. Here comes the fish. I'm going to take him 
over on that side. Jess got a watch, he's very light rods, you don't pull the tip back too fast. Nice fish. This time he's on a on a white side winder. Weedless. Come here. Come here. Gotcha. White side winder there, weedless one. Pop that hook out. Make sure you put the uh, lure back to the weedless position there. And there. Prime eating fish. Number six, I think we got now. Gonna keep working away and then we're gonna keep one for late afternoon camp and cook. For TA outdoors? Absolutely. Hey Sean. On the bolt rig guys, on the bolt. <laughs> the bolt. Oh, nice fish. Oh, that is a good fish. That's a lovely fish, Dad. There's the bolt. I hate to say it, but this static worm is pretty well out fishing I think it's killing, killing it all, your traditional fire tail. It is really good. Shows your old school lures still work, you know. Don't have to be all the newfangled stuff. You can try them. They, look, Pollock, when they're on the bright will eat pretty much anything. And I'll just show you, they've got a very big extendable mouth. And when you feel a sort of plucking sensation on your rod top, it's this mouth opening, trying to suck the lure and fold the sand eel down. And that's why you never strike onto a pollock. You always wind the line you until it actually goes tight. Look at this. I've changed lures, I'll show you in a minute, guys. I went for a bigger lure this time. And as a result, a bigger fish. But look at that. Absolutely. I've got to show you this lure in a minute. Big paddle tail one, isn't Big it? Big paddle tail, look at that. There's the lure, look. No problem. Four and a half inch lure this time. Look at the tail on that, on the lure itself, sorry, the shad. Boom. First drop. First drop, I've got a 12 gram jig head on there, as well as the, what? Half an ounce? Yeah, or, uh, yeah, a couple of ounces? Yeah, on that, yeah. Keeps it well down. Yeah, lovely colours on it. But look at the colours as well, I've changed the blue. The TAF blue. Oh, I think that paddle tail sends out good vibration, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, look, it's perfectly hooked in the yeah. top lip there. He's absolutely snapped at that. There we go. Who would have thought it? On a sidewinder lure, a ballon ras of all things. That is peculiar. How he got that hook in his mouth is beyond me. But I'm grateful he did. That's where they go around. Big. Eating shellfish, crabs, crunching up crabs and stuff like that. I think at my age I'd probably be glad to have a set of those. <laughs>